Hello Virgo. Welcome to your 2017 forecast. It's a busy year with lots of things changing and we've also got Venus going retrograde this year. Doesn't happen every year and Venus rules your money and your relationships. At the end of this video, there's going to be a list of the important dates that I will be mentioning, so you will have something to refer to. Now the year begins with Mercury still retrograde until the 9th of January. So don't be surprised if things just don't get going, almost probably until at least the middle of the month. So try not to be frustrated about this, but use the time to meditate, to reflect, to relax. And this Mercury retrograde happening here in your fourth house. So good time to relax at home, to do anything in the home. You might be renovating, redoing something in the home, even repairing something. It's a good time for um, decluttering, getting rid of things, things that you no longer need really good time, especially with that Saturn energy, uh, because that Mercury retrograde is coming back again at the end of the year. So really good time to reflect on what it is you want in your home environment, your family, your security, all those things during this Mercury retrograde during January. Now the eclipses this year are happening in February and in August. The first eclipse is on February the 10th. And this first eclipse is a lunar eclipse happening uh, here in your 12th house, lovely Virgos. So a lunar eclipse in your 12th house, it's shining a light on all your secrets, all the things that you've kept hidden. Now maybe it's the time to get things out of the closet. Sometimes old loves can come back during this time. Sometimes it's uh, when you get very insightful dreams. So you might want to keep a dream diary. It's a wonderful time for meditating, for taking time out. So it's going to be an important year because remember, eclipses last for a good six months, sometimes longer, depending what they're aspecting in your chart. And it's a really good time for uh, making sure that you are taking time out, that you are maybe meditating, being in nature, uh, taking some quietness, giving some space to your life, to the busyness of your everyday life, because Virgos, I do know, you get very, very busy, most of you. So we've got a solar eclipse happening on February the 26th, and that is happening here in your seventh house of relationships, joining Neptune here. So new beginnings for your relationships, Virgos, opportunities for a breath of fresh air to come in. And with Neptune being there, you may well meet your soulmate, or somebody who just feels as though you're on the same wavelength. It could be a really lovely feeling, and it can be a, an intimate relationship, or it could be even a business relationship, where you feel you've just got a soul connection with somebody, and it's easy, there's a flow, and it's easy. So it's important to really step out and to look for some new relationships, because it looks exciting for you this year. Here we've got the, the Venus retrograde from March the 6th until April the 15th, and that's happening in your 8th house and then back into your 7th house of relationships. So with it being in the 8th house, this has everything to do with your finances. So it would be very important to sort out your taxes, anything to do with insurance, mortgages, banks, all those kinds of things. Really important time to reflect and to redo or just prepare everything as meticulously as you possibly can for other organizations connected with money. And then it retrogrades into your seventh house. And this is when an old love can come back into your life. And I'm going to say you may well even resuscitate an old relationship or you may resolve it. You may get the closure that you've been looking for. It's also a good time you may find yourself getting into a new relationship and I'm going to say try to wait until after April the 15th before going gung-ho because chances are when Venus changes direction the relationship often changes direction as well. 
Between April 9th and May the 3rd, we've got another Mercury retrograde. And this time, it's happening here, going from your ninth to your eighth house. So Mercury retrograde in your ninth is wonderful for publishing. It's wonderful for writing. It's wonderful for studying, for learning, for doing exams, for teaching, for sharing information. It's wonderful for reflecting upon your spiritual direction. Where is it you want to go? How do you want to bring more meaning into your life? And then it retrogrades into this eighth house, and again, just reiterating and saying to you, get your finances in order. Try to get things simplified. If you've got debts, find out ways that you could start paying them down and get rid of them. If you're looking for financing, you're looking for crowdfunding, good time to reflect on it and prepare your campaign. On August the 7th, we have got a lunar eclipse happening here in your sixth house of work, of health. So a lunar eclipse in the sixth house, there could be some changes in your work environment. Maybe a project you've been working on comes to fruition. Maybe you have different people around you. Maybe you've been working around one set of people and you move to a different department, or you move the people around you to somewhere else. It's shining a light as well on your physical health. Good time to look at ways to enhance yourself physically, because you may find that this is a time of change for your physical body. Your body wants something new. Maybe it wants new foods. Maybe it wants different kinds of exercise. Good time to tune in and really listen to what your body wants. Between August the 12th and September the 5th, we've got another Mercury retrograde happening initially in your sign, lovely Virgos, and then into your 12th house. So Mercury retrograde in your sign and your ruler. This is an important time to really think about the way you present yourself, the way you want to be seen by others. And with it being Mercury, it's a good time to ask yourself, what is it I'm thinking about myself? What am I saying to myself round and round? Am I saying to myself, what a good job you're doing? I'm enjoying my work. I'm really doing something valuable here. Or are you saying, oh, I wish I'd have got that done, and I'm not enough, and I should have, could have, would have. So the messages, the self-talk, this Mercury retrograde is going to give you a wonderful slowing down and an opportunity to shift some of the negative stuff, if you have some, into something more positive. And then it goes into your 12th house, giving you an opportunity to be peaceful, to relax, to meditate, and to be still, and to listen to the messages that come through your intuition. We've got a solar eclipse happening on August the 21st, again in this 12th house. This is a solar eclipse, so it's new beginnings, a new spiritual direction. It's an opportunity for you to renew your relationship with your inner self, to find inner peace, inner quietness. Because without that, you really can't function really productively and effectively in the world. You need both that inner quiet and then go out into the world, because then you're more balanced. You're not affected by all the different flurry of activities and energies that are around you in the day. Now, for much of the year, until October the 10th, we've got Jupiter in your second house of money. And Jupiter in that second house can bring you a lot more money. It can be an expansion of your finances. It can, however, mean that the money disappears out just as quickly as it's coming in. So you might want to just keep an eye on, you know, making sure that you're saving some of this extra money that's coming in. There may be some new business ideas, some new business opportunities that you can really take advantage of this year. So be proactive financially, because it could be a really windfall type of year for you. We've got that final Mercury retrograde happening for you. Um, here in this fourth house, as I said, happens at the beginning of the year in the fourth house, then comes back into the fourth house at the end of the year from the 3rd to the 22nd of December. So this is when you may be completing something to do with your home. You may even be moving things around in your home. And you may be just simplifying and completing the decluttering of your environment so that it's clean 
and you can function really effectively. Because Virgos, you do like to be productive. That's something that's terribly important to you. And these, Vir these Mercury retrogrades are going to give you the opportunity to get your environment into the order that you really need it in. And finally, last but not least, Saturn on the 20th of December goes into your fifth house. So it's in your fourth house all year, indicating you might be doing some work at home, you might take on some more home responsibilities, maybe for parents, um, you may even be moving home. And then when it goes into the fifth, where it will stay for almost three years, um, this is going to be a time where you can really create your own business. It's a wonderful time for using your creative instincts and abilities, making it into a profitable business. And Jupiter could well help you to do that, really lay a lot of the groundwork during the beginning of the year. Because on October the um, 11th, then it moves into your third house, and then it's going to be a year of learning, a year of studying, a year of expanding your communications, your networks, the people that you connect with. So this can really bode well for becoming independent financially and for really making something um, of your creative abilities. You may be taking more responsibility for a child or a young person. So it's a busy year ahead, jam-packed with lots of different things. Just make sure you take that quiet time. So thank you to so many of you who subscribe, comment, share. I'm offering something quite new, which is a painting, an astrological painting designed especially for you. Yes, it's designed and you might want to get it as a gift or you might want it for yourself. Here are just a couple of examples of different kinds of paintings. You can have big paintings, little paintings, there's many. And it's designed according to your date, time, and place of birth. So it vibrates to you and it can be very healing. It can be very inspiring. And the feedback has been very excellent so far, which is why I'm spreading it out and offering it more to more people. And of course, I'm st aside from that, I'm still doing readings, and for those of you who are interested, even a channeled reading. I wish you the very best for this year, and I'm sending you so much love.